And thank you for joining us for another Read with Carolee. I am so excited to bring to you our author for today. And in this time of Black History celebration, we want to celebrate our Black authors. And this author celebrates a little bit more. She is Ms. Patrice McLaren. I think I just mispronounced that, but we'll, we'll get that right. And you will want to get it right because she is bringing to us the book, Have You Thanked an Inventor Today? So, Ms. Patrice, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, I, I am so so glad to have you. And as I said to you earlier, my sons love your book. So I'm so excited for our audience to be able to read this book with you and see all of the wonderful inventors that you're bringing forth. So could you also tell us where you're reading to us from today? I am reading to you all from Bacula, Georgia. So it's a suburb outside of Atlanta. Okay, well, I... By I, way of Bessemer, Alabama. I have to shout out my hometown, okay? I have to. <laughs> Absolutely. So, yes, <laughs> yes, so Georgia, Bessemer, Alabama, shout out to you. You are bringing us today, Miss Patrice, Patrice McLaren. Did I mess it up again? <laughs> <laughs> McLaurin. It's all right. It's yes, McLaurin. McLaurin. Kato yes. Pisano, hey. I got oh. it now. So, Miss Patrice, go ahead and take it away and take us into this book. All right. So, today I am reading Have You Thank an Inventor Today? And it's written by me, Patrice McLaurin, illustrated by. Dian Wang. Fun fact, she lives all the way in China. So here we go. This world is full of inventions. Some of them we don't even think about. But if we took the time to think about them, we'd realize we wouldn't want to live without them. You see, Inventions, they make our lives much easier. And they also make our lives more fun. So we should thank the inventors who invent great inventions. For without them, we might not get anything done. Like, for instance, when your mom wakes you up in the morning to let you know that it is time to go to school, you should Stretch and yawn, oh. Rub the corners of your eyes. You probably wipe away last night's drool. Yuck. But that's when you happen to glance over at your clock and realize that you're running a bit late. Well, you wouldn't know that were it not for Benjamin Banneker. He invented the first clock in the United States. So you put on clothes and you rush into the bathroom. You wash your face and brush your teeth, then brush your hair. Well, you should thank Lyda Newman for part of your morning grooming as the modern day hairbrush was her awesome idea. Afterward, you're called into the kitchen for breakfast. This morning is cereal with fruit and wheat toast. Well, thank goodness John Standard improved the refrigerator because hot milk with your cereal, oh, that's pretty gross. And when you're on your way to school, whether you're a bus rider, a car rider, or you walk, 
you have to thank Garrett Morgan for the traffic light. Otherwise, none of our streets would be safe to cross. Then, after you settled into your classroom and you've taken out your supplies because you're such a scholar, please remember to show love to Mr. John Love, for his invention was none other than the pencil sharpener. Now, as much as I know that you love to learn, you'll admit that sometimes lunch is your favorite time of day. Mm -hmm. Well, you can thank John Robinson for your lunchbox, but for what's inside is your mom that you need to thank. And what does mom usually pack in your lunchbox? Tasty snacks that make your belly go yum. Like peanut butter, made popular by George Washington Carver. Or potato chips, invented by George Crumb. Fast forward, the school day is now over. It's been a long one and you are happy to be home. You check the mailbox, invented by P. Downing, then chill in front of the air conditioner, invented by Frederick Jones. Plus, your teachers didn't assign any homework, so you decide to play a few games on the cell phone. Well, if it wasn't for Henry Sampson's Gamma Electric Cell, believe it or not, there would be no cell phone. Oh, the horror. And these are just a few awesome inventions. There are countless other ones that I didn't even mention, like the doorknob invented by Old Dorsey or a type of guitar invented by Robert Fleming. Sarah Boone invented the ironing board and Thomas Stewart invented the mop. Lonnie Johnson invented the super soaker and W.A. Martin, he improved the lock. So now, here's what I want you to do. I'd like for you to take a moment or two and ponder or think about how life would be if these inventions weren't created for you. Then, as you lie in your bed this evening and you think about how your day was spent, don't forget to thank an inventor. Then dream about what you'd like to invent. The end. There are so many things that I <laughs> would really even like to know that were invented that, you know, where did this come from? And you have put a lot of those inventions out there that a lot of us really don't think about. And especially our little friends. Yeah. I know while my son was reading this book, he was very astonished to know that some of the things that he uses on a daily basis was invented, um, and especially by African Americans. And yeah. that is a very important thing that we want to bring about. Um, I can definitely guess at one of, you know, one of the reasons why you wrote this book, but can you tell us um, why you wrote this book? Yeah, so um, the book, I wrote the book. Um, unfortunately, it was really written out of and inspired by trauma, right? The book mm -hmm. was birthed out of trauma. The trauma that is um, Trayvon Martin, Mike Brown, Jordan Davis, Tamir Rice, um, it was written around that time. Okay. And those narratives were particularly gut-wrenching for me, not only because of the consistency by which they appear to be happening, uh -huh. but also 
because they were children, right? Mm -hmm. These were children. So my thought was, what can I do to interrupt this narrative, right? What can I do to interrupt this pattern? I know I'll write a children's book, right? I'll write a children's book that humanizes black boys. I'll write a children's book that inspires black people. Why a children's book? Because it's my opinion that a children's book is often a child's first introduction to the world, right? So if a children's book is gonna be your first introduction to the world, then it's important that we humanize everyone who exists in this world, right? Absolutely. So I'm feeling like if I write a children's book that humanizes black boys, if I write a children's book that highlights the genius of black people, then by doing that simultaneously, what I can do is engender empathy, I can engender compassion, I can engender tolerance, and I can engender respect. So that was the primary motivation behind me writing the book. The icing on the cake was the fact that it was a STEM book. I didn't even know, right? I, I had no clue that it was a STEM book. But wow. The idea that it, it was a STEM book was like the icing on the cake because of the educational trend that was happening at that time. So yes. it just kind of all meshed together. Well, kudos to you. A round of applause. I, yes, absolutely. Because this this book is very much needed. And, you know, our, like I said, I have two sons. And for them to really see all of this, and my son is very into, you know, wanting to invent things and in, into robotics and everything like that right now. So that is even more motivation for him and mo more motivation for the culture to be proud of the things that we do and to actually even acknowledge um, what the the contribute the contribution of African Americans have been in the culture, in society, in your daily life. <laughs> you know, so we that is important for not just um our African American children to know, but for all children to know. Exactly. So what what was it that um what was there a book or you know something that inspired you when you were growing up? So yeah, when I was growing up, I was like a huge poetry buff. Um, I remember being in elementary school, um, uh -huh. maybe junior high, sixth, seventh grade. And I'm telling my age because back then we didn't have like Xerox machines, right? You remember you had those old, I can't even remember what they were called, but the- I the, think it was called a rexograph or something. Purple. Yes. The, the, the <laughs> ink was purple. You remember what I'm talking yes. about? So we had those old school things. We didn't have Xerox machines. And I remember I used to go into the library. Every time we had an opportunity to visit the library, I would go in and I would grab that book and I would just write down the poems because I was just so in love with just the, the poetry, the, the, um, the, I can't, the, oh, I can't even think what term I'm looking for, but it was like, I was enthralled by the poetry. And this was also right around the time the hip hop was coming out. So it was just a whole oh, okay. thing. Um, so I, I was a big poetry buff. Um, I remember enjoying historical fiction and just historical reading in general. Um, like when I was younger, we had this encyclopedia set, this ebony encyclopedia set. And for some reason, I always gravitated towards that encyclopedia set, mm -hmm. uh, particularly the section on civil rights. I don't know if it was because I was making the connection between me living in Birmingham and all of the events that were happening in Birmingham okay. with regards to civil rights. I don't know if that was the connection, but I had a connection there. You know, just uh, memoirs. Um, I know why the cage bird sings was one of my favorite books. Um, mm -hmm. I remember grabbing the color purple when I was younger. Um, I don't know. I, I've always been kind of a cerebral reader. Um, okay. so I didn't have one particular book that just inspired me outside of poetry, right? And outside of Nikki Giovanni um, and Langston Hughes, those were my two favorite poets. And I was inspired by them especially Nikki Giovanni. 
Yes. Naked Giovanni. Had an opportunity to meet her last year. Oh, awesome. And I tell you, I fanned out. <laughs> I fanned I out. So. <laughs> Yes, I, I have a, a couple of Nikki Giovanni books as well. But I have another question for you. Okay. So if you had the opportunity to thank an inventor, who would be the one you would want to thank? I got this love-hate relationship with Henry Sampson. Okay. He is the person who gave us the um, gamma electric cell, which actually fuels the cell phone. Oh, so it's a love hate relationship, right? Because, like, <laughs> on one hand, I'm like, right, you yeah. see, it's all we have it everywhere we go. <laughs> so, on one hand, it's like, okay, I could not function or live without my cell phone. But then, on the other hand, it's like, yo, I cannot function or live without my cell phone. Like, I don't even know how I feel about that because. For years, for decades, I didn't have a cell phone and I was yeah. just fine. I found myself reading more. I found myself writing more and doing those types of things. Now with this, it's become a tool, but it's also a distraction. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of a love-hate relationship. And then of course, George Crumb, because he gave us potato chips. <laughs> yes, of course. I, I think I'm going to thank him later as well. Oh, oh. <laughs> yeah, so Patrice, thank you so much for joining us today. It, this has been a, a great book and great conversation. And I am just so glad that we are able to feature authors like you um, that have taken learning a step higher uh, for our audience and our young readers. So thank, thank you. you again for coming and joining us today. Thank you for having me. I appreciate you. Yes, absolutely. And to our young readers at home, thank you for joining us for another amazing author. Be sure to join us next Saturday. And before you leave, make sure you like, comment, and hit the subscribe button ring the bell so you don't miss a thing. Remember to always grab a book and read. And now you can go and thank an inventor for the things that you may have in your home. So till next Saturday, have a great day and we'll see you soon. Thanks for watching another amazing episode of the Read with Carolee show. We have amazing authors coming by every week. So don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe below. You don't want to miss a thing.